Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I know it's a struggle to leave the showroom floor and get over here, but I'm so happy that you took a chance to come over here and listen to me speak. So who is in the house? Do we have photo booth owners? Okay, uh, DJs, event planners, okay. Venue owners, I heard that last time. Congratulations. Um, am I missing anybody? Somebody heard them? Production companies. Production companies. Wow. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so today I'm talking about events are better together. Um, my name is Sharon Reed, and um, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I've been in business since 2013. I service the Virginia, Washington, D.C. metro area, and anywhere somebody will pay me to go. <laughs> Um, I think it's always best to tell you where I come from. You know, people get up here and go right into it, and I want to tell you why I'm standing here, what I stand for. So I started my business in 2013 after a um, sudden death of my aunt. She passed away suddenly, and unbeknownst to me, I received her retirement fund from teaching. And I said, what would she have want me to do with this money, um, you know, get a home, buy a car, pay off my bills. Um, I was able to pay off all my bills and buy my very first photo booth. And I used that photo booth, I had no experience in events, no experience in photography, no experience in photo booths, um, but I love to be around people. I was in a hospitality industry, so I love to be around people. I love doing events, going to events, um, and I lived in New York City. Uh, I teamed up with a production company and they wanted a photo booth, but they didn't have the um, capital. So they took me to the DJ Expo in Atlantic City. Anybody been to the DJ Expo in Atlantic City? It's phenomenal. Um, at that time, 10 years ago, very few photo booths. So I looked at what they had to offer. I found something that fit me, it was sleek, it was modern, it was beautiful, it was sexy. Um, I could manage it myself. Back then, there was a lot of huge photo booths, and I'm like, how am I gonna put that in my car? That's not gonna happen. How am I gonna carry that into a venue? That's not gonna happen. So I found a great product. I found a great um, strategic partner with my vendor, with my manufacturer. Uh, they were in the United States, so it was wonderful to work with them. They ended up giving me a turnkey photo booth. So a lot of Photo boofers back then were doing a lot of DIY. They had the experience with cameras and, and technology and they were able to put these booths together. I didn't. So to get a turnkey operation, I had uh, mentors that would help me. It was phenomenal. I linked up with that event company and they started sending me out to events all over New York, New Jersey for $600 each time. No matter how long it was, no matter how far I went, no matter if it was a wedding, a birthday party, but I was gaining that experience. I was learning my booth. I was learning the types of events I like, the types of events I don't like. I don't like weddings. Everybody laughs at me, I, I don't like weddings. Um, so I just learned a lot in that first year and I was able to kind of step out on my own and decide, hey, I can do this for myself. I can find clients. I don't need them to kind of dictate my business for me. So I walked away. I walked away from um, working with them solely. Um, so when I had availability, of course, I would do events with them, um, but I loved the partnership. I loved working with different people in the industry, and so I continued to do that. Some of the people that I met along the way were not necessarily photo boofers. They were DJs, um, they were event planners, uh, they were um, people associated with the community as far as um, anybody a part of a chamber, chamber of commerce, things like that. In my, in my area, we have something called the Metropolitan Business League. It has over 500, um, sorry, not event planners, but it has over 500 businesses that um, we could sew into, we can talk to, we can network with. 
Um, and these people are business owners, they are head of companies, um, and they believe in a sense of community and working within um, the structure that the league had provided for us. And so I started getting jobs from them. After that, um, it gave me the confidence to go out and try to get more jobs outside of that network. Um, some of the companies that I've worked with, um, the CDC, um, currently I tour the country with them on a campaign called Let's Stop HIV Together and they all have my photo booth at different trade shows like this to draw in people to take pictures and also learn about their campaign. Um, one of my top clients right now is the Commanders, Washington Commanders, recently the Washington Redskins. Um, I came aboard right when they were changing that name. And so, of course, with a new name comes a lot of marketing and a lot of marketing money. And so I was working with them every single week, doing events, 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 because we got to get that new name out. So I said, oh, this is great. Um, so I do a lot of fan events. I'm at most home games. Um, I work with the organization, so I do a lot of inside events for them. They have charities, so I do a lot of their charitable events with them as well. Also do social events birthday parties, weddings, anniversaries. And I do promote myself through social media. Um, I do promote myself, um, um, I don't do a lot of paid advertising. Anybody get into a lot of paid advertising? I think when I came in, I was able to kind of infiltrate the business um, very easily. Instagram was just starting, so we didn't really have a whole lot of people doing what I did. So if somebody was having a photo booth in my city, I kind of either, it was either me or I knew who was doing it. So I was able to build up that, um, the business really easily with my name and word of mouth. Who else relies on word of mouth or networking? Good, good, good. And there's nothing wrong with paid advertisement. I just haven't had to do a whole lot of it. Will I do it? Absolutely. But I just haven't had to do that. Um, so some of the people in this picture um, are all in the event industry. Some people might know Braun, the flower guy. He presents a lot. He's a big speaker um, in the wedding industry. Um, and then there's a, a corporate uh, event planner. And so what we do is in our city, we have lunch and learns. We have happy hours. Um, we tell each other when the knot is going to be in town so that we can go out together and do different things. Um, the good thing is, when there's events, we work together. So I love to show up at an event and I have my friends with me, right? Because being a sole entrepreneur, I don't have coworkers. So it's good to have people outside of the photo booth industry that I can call my friends and my coworkers. Um, keep going there. So. Through my success, through being on stage, um, I've been doing the Photo Booth Expo, speaking for the Photo Booth Expo since 2017. Um, we have a strong women organization within the photo booth industry. I also speak with them. So being out there, people seeing me, seeing what I do, people started to ask me, how can I get corporate events? How can I grow my business? How can I walk away from my job and do this full time? And I didn't say that. Uh, when I bought my photo booth, seven months later, I left my job. I haven't looked back. So I've been um, pretty much full time for 10 years. I decided to build a community. It's called Chit Chat Photo Booth. This happened during the uh, pandemic. We were all sitting at home, 18 months of not being able to be in front of people, not being able to interact, be at live events. So. I started talking with uh, a friend of mine, and we just said, we're always talking about photo booths. We're always talking about photo booths. Let's do a podcast together. That podcast never happened, but the community did. <laughs> so right now, we have about 500 members in our community all over the country and the world. Um, they said, this is great online. When the world opened back up, let's get together. So I started offering the retreat. So we have a photo booth owner's retreat. We go all around the country twice a year to different cities. Things that they wanted was hands-on technical skills. They wanted to sit down, pull out their laptops, bring their photo booths, 
and really work through different um, skills, techniques, technologies, um, marketing, sales that they don't necessarily get when they come to events like this, right? I don't know who I'm speaking to, so I'm just speaking to the masses. But when we're in a small and intimate um, situation, we can really get to know each other. And what comes from that, you get skills that you can take and implement right away into your business. So when you get home, it's already working for you. Some other things you get is connections. We have a collective of people that will work with each other um, from different cities, from the same city. I know a lot of people say, how do you operate in a saturated market? Well, you can't be friends with everybody. Everybody's not gonna be your friend. Everybody doesn't have the same mindset as you. As you. Everybody doesn't have the same uh, work ethic as you. But when you find the people that you do have that in common with, you wanna connect with them and make yourself stronger. Uh, last year, 20, this is 2023, 2022, the beginning of the year, I threw my mom the biggest birthday party ever. She is a December baby like me, but all of her sisters were also born in December. So my grandmother would never give each of them of their own birthday party. So I decided, mom, I'm going to give you your 70th birthday party. She loved it. Right after the birthday party, um, she was diagnosed with two forms of cancer. So within the last year, we have been battling that, going through her treatment. She's fighting the fight, guys, right? Um, and so my business started to suffer. Because I had built that community of collective women and men in my industry, they jumped in. No hesitation. What do you need? You need me to do this job? You need me to do that job? Whatever you need, I will help you. And I know that didn't happen by not sharing, not getting on a stage, not communicating. What's for you is for you. You Nobody can take your business from you. If you don't, and I always say you reap what you sow. So I always sow into people. I sow into people's businesses. I don't want to see people make mistakes that I made, costly mistakes that I made. So within my uh, community, we have taken people that have recently gotten a photo booth to six figures in less than a year because they're following what we're doing. They're not making the mistakes. They want to they wanna leave their job, great, let's, let's get to it, let's work. So we do weekly webinars. We call it Money Making Mondays. So every Monday we tackle something, we do something together. Of course, this Monday I'm here, so what did I do? They came along with me. I did a live, I walked around, I answered questions. Sharon, they got a sale, get this from me, do this for me. So we really work together um, and we, we rely on each other's strengths. I'm not a technical person, but there's a whole lot of people in my community that are. So when I have a question, I jump right into it. Last night, we have a Marco Polo. Anybody ever heard of Marco Polo? It's a really great app. Um, and so in the collective, if we're out and about and somebody's doing a job and they get into trouble, they can join us on Marco Polo and we'll all jump in and help. So a, a young lady was out doing a 360 and her, um, computer was crashing. Guys, I need help, what's going on? Three or four of the technical people jumped in, started helping her, lo and behold, she got through the job, she was able to continue. This was a $7,000 event that she was working on. We can't mess that up. Um, so we were never alone when you join the community. So that's the power of a community, that's also the power of networking. Ooh, the retreats. So we started the retreat in January of 2022. We had our first one in Washington, D.C. 360s were coming out. So everybody's like, well, what is this 360? There's so many of them. How can I be better? How can I be different? So we um, contacted, well, I contacted OrcaView. OrcaView is the originators of 360s. I said, hey, I have a group of people. They really want to know about 360s. Can you come by? I'm going to have a whole bunch of photo boofers that want to learn about 360s come to D.C. Since you're in D.C., do you mind stopping by? Better yet, I'll sponsor it. They sponsored the entire event. They had us come into their facilities, watch what happens when the material comes in until it goes out to be shipped to their customers. They came and did a whole day of training with us. Um, people bought more booths. People bought more supplies and they walked away with connections. I said, I gotta do this again. So we are now on our fifth um, 
retreat. We will be in Dallas, Texas. Anybody from Texas? Woo! All right, we'll be in Dallas, Texas in September uh, 17th through the 19th. Um, and then following that, anybody from Florida? Anybody know Ryan from Spot My Photos? Ryan is here, he's bending over there, but he has graciously asked us to come down and learn about Spot My Photos. So we're gonna have our next retreat after Dallas in Tampa, Florida, so please, Look out for that. And I don't know if you've noticed, every time I go to a different slide, I got chitchatphotobooth.com. That's our website. But we also have a Facebook community, and we would love for you to join us there. So some benefits of networking. This might, do you might know um, Terika? She is a uh, wonderful event planner out of um, Georgia. She attended um, our retreat in Atlanta. We did Atlanta last summer and I had her come speak. Because another thing that I find when photo groupers come around or if you're in a group of industry people, you guys talk about your, you know, how, how you look, what you do, your, your, your highs, your lows, your pros, your cons. But sometimes you need to see how other people see you. So I always try to invite somebody from outside of our industry to give us a look at how do they see our industry, how do they see us. So Terika came, uh, she's a luxury wedding planner and she gave us some really, really great tools. Um, if you don't follow her, you should. She's amazing. Uh, we met at Wedding MBA about two years ago. And she um, told us, hey, this is why I hire photo boofers, or this is how I see you guys. Um, we were able to ask, how can we be better? How can we reach people of your level? How can we do the types of events that you do? And she was gracious to give us all of that information. Um, so collaborating with other professionals outside of your um, industry is also good. Even though we are all event planners, how many of you go to conferences that have nothing to do with your industry? Why? Whatever. And to also what? Network, right? Um, when I come to Vegas, I always see what other conferences are here. My brother lives here, so I always try to extend my visit a little bit longer. But if I'm able to capture another conference while I'm here, I go. So a couple of years ago, I was here for Wedding MBA, and I looked around, and IMAX was here. IMAX is one of the largest conferences for meeting planners um, in the world. Um, so I went to the conference for two reasons. I had met a young lady who was here for Wedding MBA, but she lived in Canada. And this was during um, COVID, of course, and she could not get back into her country unless she had a, a negative test. She had called around, prices were crazy, but this conference, IMAX, was offering free COVID tests if you were able to um, come to their thing. So we went to it, I walked around, I ran into the CEO of DC, I'm sorry, Destination DC. That is the travel and tourism uh, for Washington DC. And their job is to what? Attract people to their city. Um, by attracting people to their city, they're offering them the best vendors possible. So usually you have to pay $1,500 to join Destination DC. Well, he told me, we're starting a new program and we're offering a whole year for free for minorities and women. Sign me up. So I got a full year of membership. Um, you were able to look at two years worth of calendar of events that were coming into the city. They gave mentorship. They gave um, monthly check-ins. They put me my business on their website. So any large event, conference, whatever was happening in Washington, DC, was able to go through and find me on that website. I said, well, they do this in D.C., they must do it in my surrounding cities. Visit Richmond, uh, visit Baltimore. So in your cities, if you are trying to get more corporate, if you're trying to do more um, larger scale events, week day events. Another thing I found out during COVID is I don't wanna work weekends anymore. Um, since COVID, I can't even remember the last time I worked a weekend. I'm now doing weekday events. Manifest what you want, okay? Um, and so I was able to um, get on the list for all of the um, 
uh, regional tourism websites in my city and the surrounding cities. Other strong relationships I build is with my um, vendors. Um, I think some of you were here the first day when uh, the balloon lady was talking about how she is now uh, an influencer for her um, manufacturer that makes the balloons and she's going to go and speak for them. Same thing. If you use a certain product, tell people about it. Ryan's here. I think he has a great product, right? So tell people about it. Build that relationship because you are going to run into trouble at some point. And you want to <laughs> sorry, you want to make sure that when you call for help, they know your name. The other thing is when you're sharing and you're posting, send it to them. People will find out what you're doing, right? And so when they do find out, oh, you use SnapPick. Um, I can go to SnapPick and just, you know, get a photo booth. Well, they don't do photo booths, they do software. So if they get inquiries, who are they gonna send the inquiry to? Their most trusted vendors. They're gonna send it to Sharon. They're gonna send it to Innocent. Oh, that's Innocent. Was anybody here and, and heard about Mr. Innocent Malik? He's in the building today, and we build a strong relationship. He's been on my podcast. I did start that podcast, by the way. He's been on my podcast. And so building that relationship with your vendors is very important because when you're in trouble, they're going to be there for you. When they have new products they want to test out, they're going to give it to you first. Um, and they're also going to help... Um, promote you. So you can make that part of your marketing plan, your business plan, is that some of your business comes from your vendors. All right, so we also talked about attending industry events outside of your network, outside of your industry. It's very good to do that, as well as um, online communities. I have my own community. How many people are part of Clubhouse? Who got involved in Clubhouse during COVID? Clubhouse was really in influential during time. I've kind of gotten away from it, but it's still, it's still really, really good. Um, I also um, like to do corporate events. So I join um, organizations or, or groups that deal with HR. And when I'm in there, I listen to what they're saying and I try to give them feedback or value added um, information if they give an example of an event that they're having or what they're doing or I'm looking for something, I'll try to impart that the photo booth would be a great addition. Um, you also want to follow up with your contacts. When you're going to these events, when you leave here today, how are you going to follow up? Are you going to just send an email and say, hey, it was so nice to meet you. Uh, let's connect on Facebook, start liking their post a couple of months, and then what, nothing? No. What you want to do is find ways to add value to their business. Hey, I saw you make a post. Let me help you with this. Or, oh, you're going to be um, doing a big festival. Were you able to secure some sandbags to make sure that your stuff doesn't fly away? So always finding ways to give value. People remember that, and they will remember you. And when you need help, they'll do the same. Um, let's see. So a couple of case studies. I always like to share how I received uh, some of my jobs. I'm so sorry, this is kind of fuzzy. Um, one of my strategic partners is a DJ, a local DJ. Um, he does a lot of weddings. I don't mind doing weddings for him because he brings me to business. I didn't have to really work for it. But we've been working together about a year, and he says, Sharon, I just secured a contract with the biggest catering company in the city, and they have secured a contract with the biggest venue in the city. I wanna bring you along with me, and I want you to be their preferred photo booth vendor. So from that relationship with the DJ, I now have a relationship with the catering company. And so I offer them specialized pricing 10 to 20% based on the number of events that they do with me a year. And what I also do with them is I go into the office and I do demos. Every time I have something new or exciting, I'll show them what I'm doing. And they not only 
ask one or two people, they ask the entire company to sit down and watch my presentation. The good thing about that is when um, the jobs are coming through, they don't always come into one person or your contact, they come to the entire company. So you wanna make sure they all know your name. So I got their information, I created a document, it's a, um, it's a, uh, a booklet that they can keep on their desk. So they don't have to figure out, uh, is Sharon available, does she have this, um, uh, how does this uh, play into my event? So they asked me to create something where, can you give me pricing or can you give me ideas of what types of photo booths would be good for festivals? What types of booths would be good for galas? What types of booths would be good for a crowd of 100 to 300? And so I did that for them. And so I find that that relationship is working a lot better than me just saying, hey, I have a photo booth. If you ever need one, let me know. Um, and then weekly or monthly check-ins are really good too, depending on the type of relationship with, you have with them. If you know that they're a very busy company, you wanna make sure that you stay on top of them a lot more than somebody who only sends you business once a year, um, once a quarter, things like that. I went to do an event. Um, it was actually a wedding. <laughs> and, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> and one of the bridesmaids happened to be the personal assistant to uh, NBA player John Wall. He was playing for the Washington Wizards at the time. And um, she ended up hiring me to be the preferred photo booth vendor for his charity. So he goes out and does charities for schools and things like that. Um, anybody watch Real Housewives? Real Housewives of Ella, what is that? Which one's your favorite? All of them? All of them. Do you watch Potomac? You do? So right here in the middle, that's uh, Robin and Giselle. And Robin used to sell fashion jewelry. And we used to sell fashion jewelry together. She also was an event planner. Who knew that? Watch, so. Um, she was one of my first clients when I first started, and I did some horrible jobs for her. They were terrible. Oh, I didn't know what I was doing back then. But when she became a housewife, she remembered me, and so I do all of her events um, on the housewife show. So sometimes you'll see my work, sometimes you'll see my shoulder. Um, uh, recently, Giselle's daughters turned 16. That was my 360. Um, and that particular event, and I was so upset because I didn't use the software that I wanted to use. And of course, all those videos went viral. So uh, her ex-husband was there, that one went viral. Hers was inside of um, People's Magazine online. I was like, oh. But it was great, it was great to work with them and I continue to work with them. Um, I put this one up. Um, do you, we always meet photographers. Sometimes um, I'm working and I see the same photographer over and over again. Um, because I do photo booths, photography is very, you know, kind of close. And I'm able to say, hey, sometimes if you want to use me instead of you going out, let me know. Because they're one person. They can't always, you know, be at certain things. So this one photographer, she ended up getting me um, Soul Cycle. I think it's like a... a a club where you can just go and do the cycling. So they have franchises all over the city. So now I do their holiday party in Washington, D.C. every year because we met at an event and she continues to call me. Podcasts. So I started my podcast, but I'm not always consistent with it. And I'm more of a Q&A kind of girl. So I started putting myself out there to be on other people's podcasts. And even though people like mine, I get more calls from the other people's podcasts that people saw me on. In our last retreat, we had a gentleman come. He never owned a photo booth. He said he saw me on a podcast. He paid $500 and showed up at the retreat. From that retreat, he ended up buying a photo booth. He ended up joining my mentorship. And he's worked, oh man, about eight events with me. Um, and now he's on to his second booth. And this is in a matter, that was in March. And now he's on to his second photo booth. So, um, and that all came from doing a podcast. Um, 
see. If you scan this QR code, I created a workbook and also a way for you guys to keep in contact with me. But scan the QR code, it's a free, um, a free workbook, networking workbook, just some step-by-steps guides to expanding your professional network and um, different um, exercises and tips and templates that you can get. Um, but also by joining the community, like I said, I give, we do weekly um, webinars. I also do weekly content on side of the Facebook group as well as um, as well as our uh, membership group. All right. And hopefully this will play. The internet's kind of fun here. Please play. I wanted to show you the last retreat. Oh. Sorry, guys. Huh? Let it load? Okay. No, it's pausing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I have it. That's why I was going to go get it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I do, I do. I have it right here. Um, yeah, search for it. I might not have it titled. I think this is it right here. I apologize, guys. I apologize. Hold on. It's real short though. It's okay? Okay. So that was the retreat we just did in Richmond, Virginia. Um, in March. And like I said, we will be in Dallas. We have Josh Pather, who spoke yesterday. Um, he's the uh, owner of Photo Booth International, um, as well as uh, Bill Vanderkamp, he is a um, longtime um, photographer as well as he works with uh, Imaging Spectrum where we get all of our um, printers and media from. 
Um, we have a couple that does, they built their whole company on doing events outdoors at festivals and retreats and different events like that. And they do 360 mainly, but they also do photo booths. Um, but a lot of times people not are unprepared, but they don't, they don't know exactly what they need to get through a full day of doing outdoors, of outdoor events. So they're gonna be talking about that um, as well as um, this young lady named Tiffany, she does really great content for social media and how to use social media to um, market our business. She's really up on the different trends and algorithms as far as um, social media is concerned. So she'll be talking about that. We have to also have a gentleman named Michael Barber. He um, has scaled his business to the point where he's ready to sell, right? So I know all of us, we don't want to do this until we're 50, 60, 70, 80. Uh, we do need some successors. We do want to sell this business and um, eventually walk away, or maybe we don't. But he's going to be talking about that because um, he is actually selling his business and moving to Dallas. I said, oh, well, great. You'll have so much to share with us. Um, so he'll be there as well as myself. Um, and it's a three day. We start on Sunday. We have, as you can see, we have a lot of fun. We open up with a mixer. Uh, we do very intense hands-on training all day Monday, half a day Tuesday, and then we part, so sad, to part on, uh, on Tuesday afternoon. But um, if you guys are interested and you really want to come, I am offering $100 off of the ticket price um, for the show um, here and then within a week time. If you do uh, connect with me, I'll be able to offer that still that same um, that same package because we really want you guys to come. Um, so I've done a lot of talking. We have a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions for me? Anything I didn't say that you wanted to hear from me? Anything about the types of um, corporate events? Any questions? Hi. Yes. So you have a restaurant inside of Hollywood, yeah, so and you want to get to a point where um, production companies come and use your venue for correct. events. Correct. Um, and do you have any connections with um, any production companies currently? No. Um, yeah. well, some, some like event planners that I've worked with through, mm -hmm. different avenues, but since they haven't heard of me mm -hmm. in like the last 10 years, yeah. like that, I don't. Yeah. Um, I'm such, a, I'm such a reality TV girl, like I love reality TV and what I've noticed, like what you're saying is, when they do, do production, they always showcase where they are and the name of those locations. I've I, huh? I've already worked with all that. Okay. But I've never kept a relationship. Oh. So what type of, um, what type of connections do you have? Do you have just their emails, their phone numbers? Okay, so I would continue to share with them what you're doing now. Any kind of pictures, tag them on social media. Just continue to, to um, share with them what you have going on right now. Any um, updates, if you've gotten new menus, if you've um, changed your decor, if you're now offering patio, anything that you're doing new. Do you do newsletters? Yeah. Like, launching everything, like, boom. Boom. Um, and then definitely opening up your, your restaurant to events, to the event. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to go, like, 
I would definitely write it out in a business plan and strategically say, this is what I'm focusing on this quarter, this is what I'm focusing on second quarter, this is what I'm focusing on third quarter. But the relationship building is good. You want to also continue to add value. Like, always look at it as, people always look at it as what's in it for me. So make sure when you're delivering what you're delivering to your contacts, that it's all about them, how you can serve them, how you can help them, right? How you can take something off of their plate and add value to what they have to do. But never look at it like, hey, you know, come spend money with me, come spend time with me, come see me. That's gonna come because you continue to add value to them. But always put in, but you can do this here. Or always add in, I can help you in this way so that you're continuing to build that relationship. But definitely wanna get that strategic um, business plan and write down what you want to do and be strategic about it. Yeah. I hope this helps. It does? Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Ooh, I love it. Um, so I would suggest, um, what type, what type of corporations do you want to reach out to? Venues like conference centers or venues like hotels or restaurants? Conferences and entertainment. Um, so uh, in one of the places in my I guess area is like a multi-purpose center. Um, and they're on a college campus. So the college campus has some influence, but they have their own situation. Um, I think somebody else talked about site visits. I'm an event planner, right? You do plan events, right? I'm an event planner. I want to schedule a site visit. I want to come by. When you come by, you want to kind of hear their story, get to know what they do, how they do things, ask tons of questions about them, have them talk more than you. They're like, oh, she's really nice. You didn't say anything. They said everything. From what they say, see how you can make it better, see how you can take something off of their plate. Um, also find out things about the venue um, that will make things easier for you. When, when you have photo booths come, where would you like them to load in at? Where do you set them up at? Um, where, where, where can you see you know, um, us doing a VIP lounge with a photo booth situation? To try, start brainstorming ideas that would um, add value to what they're trying to offer their clientele. You know? um, and then also, you said, what else? You said, uh, Entertainment, like movie theaters, like um, sports venues. Okay, so like even with the commanders, right? The facility has their own people, right? So the FedEx field have their, and they just kind of operate the space. They're their biggest client but they also have concerts. Beyonce's coming in a couple of months, right? Um, so find out, because one of the ideas I had the other day was, they have me coming in and they have these suites, right? Our, our, our product is very luxury. So what if we offered photo booths inside of suites as part of the rental package? So you're kind of already solving that problem. Make sure you tell them why it's important, what they can get from it. So. If somebody rents the suite, we only deal, they're only dealing with that client, but the people that they invite are guests. And people that can get a suite at FedEx or wherever your large you know, stadium is, they got a little money, you know. Corporations have them. Exactly, exactly. And so if you can get your product in there, you're gonna be in front of who? the higher ups in the, in, the, um, in the business, in the corporation. My girlfriend, her company has a suite in FedEx. It's um, Pepsi. Pepsi. Um, and so when they utilize the space, 
they're bringing in people that they want to show off for. So you're helping them show off by adding another added value, a personalized, branded, customized experience. Okay? Um, does that answer your question? It does? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So before my past life, I was in HR. Um, and so if you're in HR, um, we were in a hotel, so we probably wouldn't be the customer. But um, look at your surrounding um, um, businesses within five miles, say five miles of your venue, and reach out to them. Offer them something that they can't do at the office. Sometimes those meetings are secret, and so that would be a great place to take people off property and to do something with. I don't know how you know big your venue is, how many people you can hold, but a lot of times when people are hosting events after work, they don't want people to go too, too far because they'll end up going all the way home. So if they can find venues or things in their local area, they're going to come to you first. So go ahead and build out the package. Take it off of their to-do list, right? Um, my HR contact with the commanders, it is almost impossible to get her to sit down at her desk and plan out the event. So what I started doing is when she tells me a date, I kind of already take it off her plate. This is what I'm going to do for you. So she doesn't have to figure out what she wants to do for me. You could do the same. So figure out a package for your corporate clients. Um, and then if you can um, stop by, get a brochure, um, make a video. Um, what's it, Renee? The other lady, Renee, she did a presentation where she created um, a venue. Um, it was kind of like a, oh gosh, I don't know what she called it. But anyway, it was like a venue showcase. She, she had pictures, how, how your event looks set up for corporate events, how you set up the food, how you set up the tables, everything you do that would make their life easier. So all they're doing is sending you a check and showing up. But if they got to figure out, oh, you know, how are we going to get there? To the, tell them you got parking. You, yeah, we talked about this. You have the parking. Oh, yeah, we have plenty of parking. Um, we can do this. We can do specialized um, catering. You know, we have a chef that does uh, vegan meals, whatever it is, right? So find out as much as you can about the company and what makes, you know, what would build a relationship with you and then take it off their plate because you've already planned out the experience for them. Yes. Anybody else? Oh, see, look at that connection. Networking. Anybody else? This was great. I really enjoyed being here with you guys. Um, Shout out to Ted for organizing the uh, first inaugural, and congratulations to you guys for taking a chance on a first time event. I was at the very first photo booth expo, and this was a lot bigger. So now they have over 5,000 people that come. I can't wait to see the event industry expo five years from now. And you guys can always, I was at the first one, let me tell you. They had this, and we were inside this room. So keep coming, keep supporting this industry, because we can only get better together. So congratulations to you guys from leaving your homes, from leaving your children, your pets. I miss my dog so much. And coming out here and learning and networking. And if you can take anything that I said today and put it into your business, I appreciate it. Please join Chit Chat Photo Booth community and share your information with us. We like people that don't do photo booths too, so don't, don't worry if you're not a photo boofer. Please come and join us.